Corinna. Hey, congratulations for the power. Thank you so much. Hey, it's a, it is a fascinating um, horror ghost story that, uh, that you actually came up with. So where, where did the original idea came from? What sparked you to, uh, to come up with this story? Um, the original idea was uh, inspired or really a response to um, some really horrible stories that were around at the time I started writing about big institutional abuse scandals that were being uncovered um, that had been going on for decades, um, a few of which w had been mainly happening around the 1970s. Um, and I think it was the feel of those lost young people and voices being silenced felt a bit like a ghost, a hidden presence in the darkness that wasn't being acknowledged. And I just thought it was very rich territory for a ghost story. When, when you were referring to abuse stories, are you talking about like children or adult abuses uh, back then? Uh, yeah, it was a whole bunch of, I mean, they're still evolving and coming out, to be honest. But um, it was, it, the, the common denominator was that they were all in different kinds of institutions. So hospitals, uh, children's care homes, schools, churches. Yes, lots of children, but not entirely. It was more the fact that these institutions had kept so many secrets and so many people must have known or had some kind of inkling of what was going on. Um, that was the thing that I found the most disturbing and that I was responding to. So how did you come to the, uh, you know, the, the roundabout into a hospital setting now for, for yourself? How, how do you narrow it down? Um, I felt that, um, I mean, hospitals are quite innately scary because people are very vulnerable in them. And I really like the idea that um, our lead character, Val, who's got a complex background, has attempted to turn that into something positive by healing and by trying to do the opposite, really. But because she's only gone so far with her background, that all unhinges and unravels during that night so her best efforts are kind of quite easily undone so I just I like the the very interesting power dynamics as well from the 1970s of the very intense hierarchy of hospitals where the doctors were basically gods and then there was the matrons who were the kind of middle strata and then the nurses were quite um uh didn't really have much power in the setup at all um and there was a, a big thing about uh, women going there just to get married and um i thought all those dynamics were really interesting i think that's that's terrific now you chose this very specific year 1974 um i don't i don't know what to, why you actually chose that specific year maybe it's a historical context and i think it's a good year that's the year I'm, i was born as i'm dating myself in this interview but uh could you tell tell us more about 1974 why why is it so significant well, um, we chose to set it then because uh, of the actual historical um, fact, the only historical fact in there, which is that there was blackouts at that time of year um, that were being enforced by the government in retaliation um, against striking unions. Um, and there was, uh, that was particularly a uh, bad patch of blackouts. They were actually over a couple of year period where, um, the government was shutting off the power across different parts of the country regularly, um, sometimes daily. So people were having to live uh, without, in darkness um, quite regularly, which is an amazing thing and not a bit of history that people talk about very much now. Um, I mean, I was only two at the time, but uh, people who lived through it say it was a very strange and unnerving time. And I just thought that's, you've got to set a ghost story during that actual um, event. Now this, this um, hospital setting um, of, of yours, it, it, was a, it was a very scary uh, place um, wa wa watching the film. Um, where, where's this production set? What, was it an old hospital? Was it an office building? Um, did you have to like basically remodel it to create that 1974 feeling? 
It's a really old hospital building um, that had recently been shut down and was no longer operating as a hospital. Originally, it was a psychiatric Victorian asylum, basically, um, had had other uses through the NHS over time. And fortunately for us, was fully decommissioned just before the shoot and became available for us to use the whole space, which was amazing. Um, so we had the the template there of this incredible historic building anyway and then we just layered in our colors our world and built our sets into some of the spaces that were already there that's amazing they they do the same thing here in uh, in La los angeles using old ho hospitals psychiatric hospitals but uh but there are using those places there are always like these ghost stories that come out of hopefully you didn't get haunted on set did you <laughs> Um, there were ghost stories that we were told uh, that were um, that security guards who'd worked there for many years uh, were quite adamant about. And our poor security guard, when we weren't there, had to wander around that building on his own every night. Um, I think by the end, he, he did find it pretty unnerving. Um, and there were definitely, it had a very, very strong atmosphere. Um, so there were some people that uh, definitely felt that they had haunted moments. I'm, I'm curious, was the Indian girl always written in the script or you just discovered uh, Shakira as a per perfect girl for, for your film? Um, she, uh, no, the, the, that part was always written as it is on screen because I was thinking about who were the people at that time in the East End who would be targeted because they'd be the least likely to be heard. Um, and there was a bunch of, um, there was many waves of immigration obviously into the East End, but that year at that time, um, there was uh, a, a lot of immigration from Pakistan. Mm -hmm. um, so I had that in mind. Um, and actually, uh, Shakira, who plays Saba, is a very, very contemporary East End girl with a London accent who had to learn that dialect and uh, really was amazing, I thought. That is great. And, um, and one more thing. Why is Rose Williams so perfect for her role? Because she's genuinely incredibly empathetic and... Uh, emotionally intuitive and I think we trust that she means what she says when she's playing Val that she really does care. Um, she manages to put that across but also she's an extremely bold and brave actor who's willing to go to some very extreme and dark places. So that's a pretty tough combination to find in someone. <laughs> uh, so that makes her more than perfect. Now be before I let you go I know this is a uh... This is, I think this is your first um, foray into the horror genre your, yourself. Um, yeah, I made, a, I made a short, um, but it's my first feature um, anyway, yeah. Now there, there, there is a, people who watch it, there, there's, there's basically a, um, an ode to uh, the Stephen King novel. Uh, I think uh, Carrie in, in this film what, was that was that something where you had to try to find um, a horror novelist that people know about, or was that or Stephen King is your favorite? It was more that um, uh, there's there's a few quite a few little moments in there that are personal references for me, things that have inspired me, horror genre material that's inspired me, and I remember as a teenager reading Carrie and just being so struck with the kind of um, with the power actually really of uh, this girl finding this very angry place and voice and and taking her revenge um, on the world that's uh, that's made her small and, and I felt there was quite a lot of parallels between that and and the story we were trying to tell so that's why I put it in there. I knew there was some kind of link. Well, Corinna, hey, thank you very much uh, for speaking to us about the power. Congratulations uh, for, for this wonderful movie. Thank you, Gig.